Hello and welcome back. I hope you've all been having a wonderful holidays. Um, and in this video, we're going to be creating this surface of the sun using uh, just a series of 4D noise textures stacked on top of each other using different blend modes uh, to give the different levels of detail. And you'll notice on if you look at footage of actual short footage of the sun, you'll notice when material is being ejected from the surface, it follows these curves caused by the magnetic lines. Now, I couldn't find an easy, straightforward way of creating, uh, recreating that effect. So what I did instead was I rendered out a separate pass of the rays and distorted it, uh, causing this effect to look like, the, to give this effect of dispersion of energy from the surface of the sun. Now, it, it's not physically accurate, but I think it still looks kind of cool. And we're going to see how to set all this up um, inside the compositor. Um, and since all this is rendering is um, set up on a single emission shader, it renders super, super fast. In fact, it renders faster in cycles than EV on my end. Um, you can download this uh, blend file for free, uh, including the sound effects uh, in the intro for, for this tutorial. Um, in fact, uh, you should be looking out for pretty soon I'll be dropping a sound effects pack that you could be using in your projects. And the sound used in this intro will be included in the pack, but you can get them if you download the um, this blend file. You'll get the sounds used here along with it. Um, so you can join the mailing list to be notified when the full pack drops. So let's just jump into Blender and see how to set all this up. Now, since we've made it into a number of videos without any new incidents, um, I'm feeling kind of confident. So I'm just going to delete uh, the default cube and add a sphere. And that's what we're going to use to um, do this whole effect. So the idea here is to divide the, the texture on the surface into three levels of detail. And we'll do that uh, for the shadows, the midtones, and for the highlights. And then stacking all these three together and then taking the, that image into the compositor to spice it up for the final image. Now, all these textures are going to be feeding into one emission shader, which keeps it very easy for us to tweak and change things uh, uh, when we're done building this shader. So the first noise texture that I add um, is going to be for the midtones. So I'll add a noise texture and a color ramp to just tweak how the contrast of the texture. And then I'll give it a relatively high level of detail and roughness. So this just gives, remember we are creating um, a star which is supposed to be a really, really, really big object. And the higher the detail in your texture, um, the larger the object is going to be. So just play around and find um, the level that you 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 feel comfortable with or uh, that you like. And this is going to be the base uh, texture for the midtones. And then I'm going to duplicate that texture. And this one is going to be to have like to be a, a bigger texture. So I'll reduce the uh, number of the scale and also reduce the level of the detail because this one is just to introduce those dark patches. Uh, so that's why I'm using uh, um, multiply um, in the mix color node. And multiply just darkens um, one texture based on the dark values of the other. So this just gives that um, level of detail with uh, the midtones and the shadows. And lastly, I'll do the same to introduce the highlights, so the areas with, that are brightest on the surface. Um, so I'll duplicate uh, that node again and keeping the scale, the details in the node just like that, I'm just going to tweak the color ramp so that only the brightest parts of the texture will be coming through. And then I'll just use, um, in the mix color node, I'll set that to add and that just um, adds the bright pixels that are coming through on top of uh, the other two layers. So now we have three layers of details and you can go back to your textures and keep sliding the values in the color ramp node to get different results. 
in the emission shader, you can then increase the strength to really high values. And then, um, cause this is going to help us when you go to the compositor to get uh, creating those um, beams of light. Uh, it's going to help to have a relatively high value in the strength of the emission. And then you can go back and again, tweak the, cut the sliders in the color ramp to uh, tweak your look until you have something that you like at that brightness. And then to color now the whole sun, I'm using a, a mix color node and using a color blend mode. And the first socket will take the color of the textures as we've set up. And the second socket will take um, the color that you want to now color your whole sun with. And just by tweaking this one value, you can get um, different looks and styles of a star really, really quickly. Now I'm then going to add um, sort of like a rim light uh, or an atmospheric effect to the very edges of uh, the surface of the sun. And to do this, I'm going to use um, a layer weight node and using a color ramp just before I add the color of um, the, the whole sun before feeding into the emission shader, I'll add a mix color node and set the blend mode to add, and then just add this Fresnel node uh, with a color ramp node just used to tweak it. And I'm going to tweak it so that uh, the brightness is not as bright as the uh, hotspot on the actual surface, but I want it to be just a bit less bright than that. So I'll just tweak the colors in the, the color ramp node feeding from the layer weight, and then I'll just add that into the whole texture before adding the color of the sun into the emission shader. And this just gives you a really nice uh, rim to the edge of the surface of the sun. Something else that you could do to add some detail to this rim light, and it's really going to pay off when we go over to compositing, where when we are now um, adding the uh, sun rays, it's going to, if we add some variation in the rim light, the sun rays can pick up on that variation and uh, just have this really nice effect of uh, streaks of rays coming out uh, that have been picked up from the difference in luminosity of the pixels around the edges. And yeah, we're going to see this in the next step. So you can just do that by multiplying this rim light with um, a noise texture with a really high value in the scale. And this is really going to pay off in compositing. And with that, we can now uh, make a few renders and see how things look. So to create those sun rays in the compositor, I'm just going to use the sunbeams effect. And since those rays are supposed to originate from the center of uh, the sphere, what I did, you can imagine if you are creating an animation, for an image, it's pretty straightforward. You'll just place that, um, uh, the origin of the sun rays at the center. But if you imagine if you're creating an animation where uh, that origin is moving around in the screen, uh, it will be in every other frame, it will be in a different position. So it's um, not con not very easy to get it to work. So I, what I did to fix that is um, I pretty much ignored the whole problem and just created my animation such that the position of the center of the sphere will not change throughout the length of my animation. So I just went into the camera view in the 3D viewport and just positioned my camera so that uh, the origin of that sphere is at the bottom left corner of uh, the frame. And, and then I set the origin of the camera to that position so that now when I rotate the camera all around the screen, it's, go it's going to rotate from um, the position of that, uh, the origin of that sphere. So the position won't, won't change uh, throughout the length of my animation. And then now you'll notice that if I, uh, if I render now from which, if any other frame, it, uh, the effect just looks the same because the position of that center is not moving. Now, if you can think of a way to, um, instead of a workaround, like a solution to this problem, how would you get to uh, get this uh, to work with any 
sort of animation that you want to create. If you can think of a way to get around that problem, I'd really love to hear it. Uh, mention it in the comments or tag me anywhere on Facebook or Twitter, uh, anywhere you find me online. I'd really, it's something I've tried to find a solution to, but uh, I've been unsuccessful so far. And you'll also notice what I was talking about earlier. Because of that noise we introduced in this uh, rim light, you will notice how the sun rays effect picks up on that those subtle variations and it brings up a very big difference in the rays that it creates. There's so much detail here which I really, really like and I think uh, it looks cool. So to make the actual animation uh, of the texture, um, we'll need to have a central place where we can drive the animation of all three layers of detail. And first I'll change the texture type to 4D texture so that we can have that handy W slider. And then I'll use a math node and set it to multiply. And then I'll set the upper value to a really small number like uh, 0 0.01 because as it is with the W value, if I try to animate this value, even a small change is going to create a very large um, movement in the texture. So to shrink that down, to make it um, more gradual and easier to animate, I'm going to use a math node and I'm setting the higher, uh, the top value to a very small number so that when I multiply by the number from the bottom value, it's going to, uh, the resulting value is going to be much, much smaller than or the original one. So this just helps to make the whole animation process a lot easier because we're now from the output of this value, we'll go to all the uh, W uh, values of all three textures. And just by animating this one value, we'll be driving uh, the animation of all three layers. If you look closely at the animation from the intro, if you look at the, to, at the edges of the sun, you'll notice that um, the actual surface of the sun is also distorting. And because of that rim light that we placed there, it also uh, picks up on those variations in the height and brings out this um, movement on the surface to really bring home the point that it's not just the textures that are moving, but the movement is actually happening on the surface of the sphere itself. So what I did to do that, uh, I added a subdivision surface modifier and cram cranked it up to four and then added a displacement texture and used a clouds texture and increased um, the size so that I can have this fine uh, detailed uh, distortion on the surface of this of the star. And then I set the coordinates of the texture to object. And then I added an empty uh, to the scene and set that empty as the object for the coordinates. So now when I rotate the empty itself, the texture on on the surface of the sphere is going to change. So this brings us to one of those pain points that um, I usually come across when I'm using Blender. Um, it would be so ideal if the textures that you have access to in the shader editor, you could also have access to them in uh, the modifiers. Because if I wanted to distort, um, to animate these uh, di distortions um, on the surface of this sphere, if I could set uh, this texture to a 4D texture, it would be so easy to just use the W slider to, to get the animation going right there instead of just having to uh, create an empty and then parent that, create that empty as the, for the coordinates. And then it, it would be so much easier. It would be um, a very, a more elegant workflow, I guess is the term I'm looking for. And there are also things, if you could also get those textures in the compositor, we're going to come across this again when creating that, um, uh, the distorting beams. It would be so, it would have been so easy if you could have access to those uh, textures inside the compositor also. So now to create those animated distorted light rays, what I'm going to do is open another blend file and just create this texture distorted texture using just as we've been doing noise textures um, set it to 4d and then anim and then animate the w value to just get this uh, really nice noisy 
animated texture. And then we're going to take this texture and bring it back into the compositor and then use that to displace um, stuff inside the compositor. So back in the compositor, I'll just duplicate the sunbeams. And for the second one, I'm going to increase the length of the rays so that they're a bit more prominent. And then I'll add a displace node and I'll put the input from the sunbeams into the image of the displace node. And then for the vector, we're going to use that video that we just rendered out uh, from a different blend file. And you see here how it would have been so convenient if just using the procedural textures, if you could create, create them right here and then animate them right here, have the values to animate them right here inside the compositor, it would be very easy to um, just play and experiment with different types of noises to see the different types of effects you could get rather than now having to uh, render out a whole video and then bring it and then see the results. If it doesn't look cool, try out a different texture or a different, uh, uh, tweak the parameters a bit and then bring it. But it just, be, it would have been so much easier if we could get those textures. Uh, there's probably, I don't know if there's probably um, a technical reason why it, Blender can't do this yet. So if you, if you know anything about that, please uh, tell me down in the comments below. So I'll bring that image, uh, that video, I mean, and then feed it into the vector and then just increase the scale of the X and the Y scale of this distortion. And you'll notice um, it just gives you a really, really nice uh, distortion in, in the rays. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, tell me what you think about this a uh, bit longer format of videos. I'm trying to go a bit slower because I've been getting a lot of feedback from uh, mostly guys who are starting out that uh, my tutorials are a bit too fast to follow. Um, I'm really not concerned with the, the house. I don't want to get into the details of which buttons exactly to click because if you, if you use Blender long enough, you're going to get the hang of what where is. But in my tutorials, I try to go around the whys, why I choose to do what I do and how I, I do them. So I'm trying to go into a bit more detail into that. And I hope um, I hope it helps. Just tell me what you think about this. And oh, one last thing, a really cool thing you could do also with this effect is you could imprint images into the surface of the sun, um, kind of uh, like this. And the only thing you're doing here is just adding uh, an image texture, a really blurred image texture into um, those procedural textures and multiplying it in, in there so that it leaves out an imprint of that logo, which is, um, yeah, really cool. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And yeah, see you in 2021. Bye.